Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at key synthetic terms. We're going to be looking at different definitions that you'll need to know as you move through the synthetic part of the organic chemistry unit. The first term that we're going to look at is bond fission. Bond fission is where we are breaking the bonds and there are two ways for us to do this. We can either go down a route of homolytic bond fission or heterolytic bond fission. The first thing that you need to remember is when you are drawing a molecule what that actually means. So here if we have Cl bonded to Cl, this line represents a pair of electrons and you need to keep that in mind that this is a representation of what is happening at the atomic level. So we have used a line to represent the two electrons that are being shared in the covalent bond. And there are two ways for us to then break that covalent bond. We can either break it evenly, so each of the atoms gets one electron back, or we can break it unevenly, where the atoms do not get an electron back. So homolytic is where this is an even split. And this is what would happen in the initiation step of a free radical chain reaction, which you would have came across in higher last year. So this is where we would take our Cl, Cl, and we would produce two Cl radicals. So we've broken that bond evenly and each of them has went back to having one unpaired electron. In a heterolytic bond split, this is an uneven uh, split to form ions. So here we're forming radicals and over here we're forming ions. So if we go for, again, the chlorine example, which would be unusual for this to happen, but you would end up with having a Cl- and a Cl+. So both of the electrons have went with one of the atoms and neither of them have went with the other. This here is a more useful route to go down for us when we're looking at synthetic chemistry. As you'll remember last year when you did radical chemistry, you were able to get a really large mixture of products when you use free radical chain reactions. Whereas if you use the heterolytic bond fission, then you can be much more precise in what it is you're trying to produce. The second thing that you need to become used to using is curly arrow notation. So within chemistry, we have the problem of representing what's happening at an atomic level on paper so that other people can understand what is going on and so that you yourself can get across your point of view of what it is that's happening. And we have came to use curly arrows to show movement of electrons. And we have two types of curly arrow. So we have the single headed arrow. So this is a single headed arrow here. And this is for the movement of one electron. Okay, so one electron going from somewhere to somewhere else. If we then use a double headed arrow, that is the movement of two electrons or a pair of electrons, again, going from somewhere to somewhere else. So the movement is always from the end of the arrow to the head of the arrow. That is where we're using the electrons, where they've been and where they're going to. So for the single headed arrows, this is where we would have our two chlorine atoms and the electrons are being split evenly. So if you remember, we've got two electrons within this line here. One of them's going with one chlorine, one of them's going with the other to produce our two chlorine radicals. If we were to look at the double-headed arrow, this is where we just use A and B to represent what we want to do here. Both electrons are going from the area of electron density, so where the bond is, to one of the atoms. So in this case, we're giving them to the B. So the A has no longer got that shared electron that it had, but the B now has both of them, so it's negative. If you're doing synthetic chemistry, we often have at attacking groups that are trying to attack a certain molecule, and they fall into two types. We have electrophiles and we have nucleophiles. So electrophiles are electron loving, and they are attracted to electrons. They tend to be electron deficient themselves, hence they want to try and get to the electrons. And 
they're often positively charged and can accept electron pairs. So when they're attacking something, electrons with the curly arrows would be moving from the place of the electrons towards the electrophiles. Nucleophiles, on the other hand, are electron rich and can donate those and they are what we would call positive uh, loving so they are trying to get the positive charge so these tend to have lots of electrons they can donate these electrons to form bonds and they tend to be molecules with lone pairs or negatively charged ions and then they tend to form dative covalent bonds. You should remember dative covalent bonds from the transition metal topic. That is where both electrons are provided by one of the atoms within the covalent bond. Okay, and these will seek electron deficient areas because they have electrons to donate. Another two definitions that we have are carbocation and carb anion. These are simply positive and negative ions which are centered upon a carbon atom. So carbon is incredibly important within chemistry. It has a whole field of its own organic chemistry. And because of that, it tends to get some terms of its own. So here, a carbocation would be a carbon with a positive charge on it and used less often we have a carb anion which would be a carbon with a negative charge on it so you'll see throughout the synthetic chemistry where carbocations and where carb anions come into play so the final part of our synthetic chemistry is to look at the different types of reaction that you might come across a lot of these you will have experienced before so we're just going to run through some examples of them so the first one here is addition this is where you take a molecule that is unsaturated and add something onto it. So if we take ethene and we add on H2, then we will produce ethene. That is also an example of a hydrogenation reaction. Another special example of an addition reaction is hydration. So this is where we take our unsaturated molecule and we add on water, and this allows us to produce an alcohol in this case, ethanol. Elimination reactions are the opposite of addition, and this is where you eliminate a small molecule and you produce a double bond. So if we were to take ethanol and we were to do an elimination reaction, then you would find that we will get ethene and water produced. So it is just the opposite of the hydration reaction. Condensation and hydrolysis you've came across from National 5 and higher, this is where you take condensation is where you take two molecules, you join them together and in the process you eliminate a small molecule. So an example that we would use would be the formation of an ester. So if we take an alcohol and a carboxylic acid, and this is a reversible reaction where we would produce our ester and water. The hydrolysis is the backwards reaction of this. So that is where we would have the ester and you would break it down with water to go back to your alcohol and carboxylic acid. So hydrolysis is the use of water to split up a larger molecule. The next two are new reactions for advanced higher. They are both substitution reactions, but they are using different attacking groups. So substitution using an electrophilic attacking group only happens when you have a benzene ring. So we haven't come on to look at benzene yet, but you will have your benzene ring and you will substitute one of the H atoms for something else. So in this case, if we react our benzene with nitric acid through a series of steps, we will eventually replace the H with an NO2. So we have substituted one atom for either one or more at other atoms, a small group. 
The second type of substitution, which is more common and you will go into in more detail, is substitution where your attacking group is a nucleophile. So for nucleophilic substitution, we usually have a look at this using the halogenoalkanes. So if we take, um, here we have chloromethane, and we attack with KOH. So OH minus is our nucleophile, it's a negative ion, and it's going to attack this carbon center here, which it sees as electron deficient because the chlorine is pulling some of those electrons away. And you're gonna substitute the Cl for the OH. In the process, you will also create KCl. So we've taken off the Cl and we've put the OH in its place. The final two reactions are another two that you've been looking at from National 5 and higher. So reduction, we see in organic chemistry as a decrease in the OH ratio and oxidation is an increase in the OH ratio. So for our reduction, this is where <coughs> we would go from something like a carboxylic acid and we would use something like lithium aluminium hydride to take that back to being an alcohol. Oxidation is going in the opposite direction so where we would take our alcohol and we could oxidize that up to be a carboxylic acid and that could be using something like a acidified dichromate. For each of these reactions I want you to name the type of reaction that is happening. Pause the video now and try these examples. So in the first reaction here, we have a large molecule. This is an ester. And you can see that after the reaction, we've produced two smaller molecules. In the reaction, we have used H2O and we've used sodium hydroxide. So we have split this molecule up at this point here. So this is a hydrolysis reaction. For this example here, we've started off with this molecule where we have a halogen attached. We're doing this with KOH in ethanol. And if we do this in ethanol, you can see that we end up with a double bond and we've got H2O and KBr. So we've actually taken away an H and a Br from this molecule. So this is an elimination reaction. And finally, we start with a similar molecule this time we're using a NaCN and we've taken the Br off and we've replaced it with the CN. So this is a substitution reaction. More precisely, this is a substitution using a nucleophile. However, you won't be familiar enough yet with nucleophiles and electrophiles to be able to identify what is happening in each of these cases yet. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe if you've not already and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.